cop and Secret Service agent. He's here to give us his top three news stories of the past seven days. The great Dan Bongino joins us tonight. Hey, Dan. Well, you're lucky because I have four. And the fourth story four. of the week... Yes, is going to be a nice segue from your UFO segment. Story number four, Tucker. Apparently, some United States senators have received an actual briefing on this UFO phenomenon. And now, like you, I always wonder why this isn't a bigger story. Listen, Tucker, we don't have yeah. to go all H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds or anything. There's no need for drama. But if you had some stuff flying over your country with a technology no one could explain... Maybe it's kind of a bigger deal, right? Maybe we should be a little more yes. concerned. I'm just throwing that out there for the audience, you know? That's my I think a, that is a story. fair concern, I would say. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. We think alike, right? All right, story yeah. number three. The Iranians, a very serious story, hitting one of our drones, um, a $100 million-plus drone. You know, Tucker, you and I don't agree on everything in politics, but I, I have to tell you, you have my respect on this one. You've been consistent on this from the start. Um, and I think you've nailed this. It's a drone. It's a serious matter. Iran's obviously not a friend to the United States. But as, you know, I think, uh, you know, Nassim Taleb describes in his book, you know, Skin in the Game, it's very easy to make these decisions about human lives when it's not, you know, your butt on the line. I understand they're yeah. serious decisions, but the way some of these people in D.C. just casually throw around war like it's a trip to McDonald's um, is candidly embarrassing for people with such high IQs or who believe they have such high IQs. So I'm did good coverage of Glenn Greenwald. Which is a, did a, great a better piece description. He, yeah, he did. I no, think so, too. Who, who believe they do. He, Thanks, Dan. Yeah, he was great. Yeah, no, good job on that. All right, story number two. Trump 2020 begins. Listen, uh, regardless of you, I, I, I'm, listen, I'm a supporter of the president. I'm a conservative on a lot of his conservative issues. You know, I'm, I'm not a news guy. I'm an opinion guy. I don't think that's a secret. Uh, but listen, Tucker, energy matters. And this rally in Orlando was a monster. And I mean that in a good way, not a bad way. I mean, do you, I ran for office. You know how hard it is to turn out 20,000 people? I live in Florida, Tucker. I know you know that. It's 94 degrees here on Christmas. It's the greatest state in the union. I love it. But you wake up Christmas morning, and, and you can roast marshmallows on the sidewalk. You had 20,000 people sitting in line in Orlando in the pouring rain in 90 degrees waiting to see this guy. The president clearly tapped into something here that the American public needs and wants. And honestly, Tucker, the energy hasn't waned one bit. He packed that entire stadium. And listen, one quick thing on this again. Uh, let, it, crowds are not necessarily dispositive. It doesn't mean he's going to, you know, I don't want to get hyperbolic right. on either end. But the Democrats ignoring this phenomenon again is going to be egg on the face twice if they underestimate this man's capacity to win an election. Big mistake. Huge. Fair point. To quote Julia Roberts from Pretty Woman. You like that? How I threw that in there? Pretty funny. All right. <laughs> Sorry, no, never, never laugh at your own jokes, by the way. Story number one, the Biden boomerang. Listen, if you're going to use identity politics, remember Tucker, Joe Biden, Mitt Romney was going to put you all back in chains and the Republicans. If you're going to if this is going to be your entire political strategy, attacking people on the basis of race disingenuously, by the way, 99 percent of the time. It's only a matter of time before a boomerangs in your face. And it happened this week with Floppy Joe, where, of course, he made a comment about working with segregationists and he gave an opening to people like Booker and otherwise, who don't really believe, by the way, that Biden's a racist, but saw an opening exactly. and are going to attack him because that's what they do. Tucker. So craven.